Leonardo AI is what many are calling the mid-journey killer. It is an entire content production suite. It can create images based off text-based prompts, much like other AI art generators, but it offers an unparalleled amount of flexibility and options, including the ability to create your own unique data set. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the UI and the features provided. Leonardo AI is currently an invite only service. So go ahead and head over to their site and submit your email. I received an invite in just a few days and I'm sure you will too. Plus it's free, so it's definitely worth trying out. Unlike Midjourney, Leonardo is actually a web application. Here on the home page, you could see the featured models tab at the very top. This is basically their AI using specific data sets for more tailored outputs. For example, if you click on one, you can see specific details that uh, are unique to this one. So things like resolution, the base model is using for its AI art generation. And at the bottom, you can even see images that were generated using this specific model. If you like a model that someone has designed, you can even follow them at the top. Below that, we can actually see the AI art gallery and if there's a specific image that you like you can click on it and you see a variety of details including the prompt itself the negative prompt and you also have the option to do things such as remix it so you can create uh, images similar to the one that you see here you can actually copy the prompt specifically or you could use the image that it generated as a reference for your own AR art generations there's some extra details below here, which will make more sense when I'm able to explain them when we're on the actual AI art generator tool page. Uh, before that, let me just mention this real quick that you can actually download the image, share the image, some extra options such as remove background. You can even edit the image in Leonardo's canvas platform, which is really crazy and we'll get into later. Heading over to the AI image generation tool, we click here. On the sidebar, you will see a list of parameters that you can adjust, such as the number of images, dimensions, guidance scale, which basically tells Leonardo how much freedom you wanna give the tool when generating your prompt. The higher the number, the more likely it is to differentiate. The lower the number, the more restricted it will be to sticking to your prompt. Step count is telling the AI how many times you want it to process the image it's generating. The higher the number, the more detailed it will be. The lower the number, the less detailed it will be. But it will also take lower or more time. So that's something to keep in mind. Tiling is something more specific to background images. Think of repeated textures, almost like wallpaper. Image to image. The AI can actually use images as references. So if you upload an image in this box here, it will take that image and extract certain details from it and try to create something based off of what you uploaded. Under the advanced settings, it has things such as used fixed seed. So each image generated by the tool is given a specific seed number. Now this number is like a reference number. So you can assign one specifically. So if you want your seed to be seed one, it will be seed one. But if you leave it blank, it will assign one on its own. And you can access that number by just clicking additional details later on. Scheduler adds noise to your image. Um, this is more of an kind of an abstract thing. You would have to kind of play around with it to see what it really does to your images specifically. And you have several options here for that. Moving on, if we go to the top, we see our type of prompt. So you could type a text prompt as you normally would. Uh, if you want, you can activate this toggle right here, negative prompt, and type what you don't want to be in your image. Below that, we have the models that I mentioned earlier. So you have some of the specific Leonardo ones that are built in, the stable diffusion ones, and you can also select custom models. One thing to keep in mind about this is that some of these models will actually change some of your parameters on the side. So think of if you're trying to create a square, it might change it to portrait mode or something like that. So pay attention to that. Make sure it doesn't change it to something you don't want it to. This is just another styler. Again, this is something you'll have to play with and see what it does, whether you like it or not. 
Prompt Magic is a toggle that basically takes your prompt and alters it to better appropriately fit for their tool. It's not necessarily something you have to use, but it can be helpful for creating more appropriate prompts. And then once you do that, you click generate and you get a certain amount of tokens per day. And based on the parameters that you selected, it will use X amount of tokens. Below here, you could see something I generated earlier. Here was my text prompt, cosmic black hole, etc., And then my negative prompt, brown. I didn't want the color brown to be in it. And you can see specific details, but say this is the image you like. If you hover, you can actually see certain things such as the ability to download the image, unzoom the image, remove the background, which doesn't really make sense for mine. But if you have a subject such as a person in your image, you can actually move, remove the background with this, which is really useful. You can upscale the image. Um, sometimes when upscaling an image, it can create minor defects or something. It can alter the image in a way that you don't like necessarily. So it has an alternative upscaling if that does happen. You also have the ability to use for image to image if you want to use this image as a reference. And then you can also edit in Canvas, which we'll get into shortly. If you guys are finding this video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you liked and subscribed so I know to make more content on Leonardo AI. And feel free to leave any comments with any questions that you may have, and I'll try to answer them. Back on the home page, we can head over to the AI Canvas by clicking this button right here. Now it is important to note it is in beta but I believe that this is the aspect of Leonardo AI that has the most potential. On the sidebar, we see our familiar parameters that we just went over. And at the bottom is where we can actually type a prompt. This toggle down here allows you to put some negative prompts. I'm gonna ignore that for now and just generate my cosmic nebula space background. And it will take some time, but it will go ahead and give you your image and then it'll give you the option to select between four different images that you like. So say I like this one, I'm gonna hit accept. Now, one of the really cool aspects of this is that you can actually drag this box over here. And if I have some of the previous image within this, it will actually fill the blank space with something that kind of fits appropriately based on what's already on the image here on the side. So as you can see, it isn't just a random image, it actually fits really well and you can toggle through this as well. Say I like this one the best, I can accept that. Now if I actually drag this box back over and I take the draw mask and I make the cursor a little bigger I can actually draw a specific on a specific part of the image that I want to change. And if it's within the square and I hit generate, it will actually change the specific part of the image where I drew the mask. So if there's certain details you don't want present like that one, see now the star is gone and you get a few other options here and you can click accept. So now that that star is gone. Whenever you're done, you can download your image. You also have the ability to upload images. And I really believe that this is what separates Leonardo from the competition and it is the future. So it's currently in beta. It's fun to play around with and I'm sure they're gonna add a lot more features to it. The last thing that I wanna go over is the training and data sets tab here on the sidebar. If we click, we get brought to this page where we can access our data sets or create a new one. Here you can put a name and describe your data set. If we go ahead and edit the one that I already have, you could see that you have the ability to upload images. So the idea here is to take a series of images, around 10 to 15 I would say, to create a data set. Now these images, you'll want them to be a specific type of art or niche. You want them to have some similarity between each other to fit some type of theme. Now you can use the gallery search on the bottom here as the images for your data set to create your model. However, one thing that I would like to do is go over to Pinterest and say, uh, I have this image of some cute Nintendo characters around a gaming console. It's a pretty niche theme. It's a pretty niche idea. 
And below you can see a bunch of similar stuff, which is why Pinterest is really cool. So you could take around 10 to 15 images. You can go ahead and upload them and that will create your own data set. Now that's all for this video. If you guys want to see me go over data sets in more detail, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll be making one in a few days. Other than that, thanks for watching and take care.